up everybody and welcome to the casual wrestling community show i am your host the notorious nerdy d and joining me tonight my co-host for the evening level up lauren what's up y'all each and every week we talk the best and worst of pro wrestling whether you are listening on podcast networks or watching us on youtube make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment on this episode lauren i enjoyed monday night raw this week as far as uh like go home raws go leading into money in the bank this was to me, this was as solid of a show as you could ask for, like like a solid seven to me. Yeah, I agree with you. It was pretty good. I mean, it didn't knock, didn't knock me off my fucking feet, but it also didn't leave me wanting too much more. It kind of did the job of like answering a couple questions that we might not have known the answers to mm-hmm. and filling in some of the holes, which is what the go home show is supposed to do. Uh, as far like we now have a, a kind of a little better picture of what the Money in the Bank ladder matches look like. We have uh, in the men's, Riddle is the, not the final, because there's still a blank spot, but yeah. but he is the latest uh, entrant into the match. So for that match, we have Seth Rollins, Riddle, Sheamus, McIntyre, Omos, Sami Zayn, and then a person to be determined at some point in time, bum, bum, bum. probably on Friday, Friday I would think, yeah. we're, we're thinking. Well, that's the last opportunity, right, for them to kind of say who it is? Yeah, Riddle being added to this match is interesting to me. I I thought, you know, we kind of discussed this a little bit last week, and and we kind of talked about it while we were watching Raw. I thought that the the way they were going with Riddle was trying to keep him away from this match because, in my opinion, I don't think he can win this match. I mean, what do you... We will discuss that later. We'll get to that. We'll get to predictions, but, I mean... I I am... I do. Oh, so you're behind Riddle in that match? Yeah, I mean... I, you know, I just, I don't foresee like this rise and fall and rise of Riddle. He had his opportunity at Roman Reigns. I don't think we do that again. But any, see, I think it's soon. a journey that they're taking with him. Yeah, that... but the journey got fucking smashed when Omos picked him up with two hands and slammed his ass on his back. But Omos is also fucking giant. Like, I mean. Yeah, but so is Omos. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is a giant. He's the. Then why don't they put Omos the against Roman Reigns in? Because you, I mean, because what Roman humiliates him, smashes him, and that's over with. They got to protect Omos as well. You got to understand that there's psychology to this wrestling thing. There's there's psychology to it. So when you're putting together a match, the thing that bothers me is there's still a spot to be determined, and we don't know who that is. But as far as the women's <laughs> Money in the Bank ladder match goes, we now know the full seven that will be a part of that match with Becky Lynch being added at the end of Monday Night Raw. Mm-hmm. I didn't love that. I, I got to be honest. I didn't love it. I liked this story of Becky becoming unhinged. I wanted Becky to be unhinged, to be left out of the title picture, and then to kind of have to, like, make herself, kind of rebuild herself. And I wanted her to win the 24-7 title. That's what I wanted. That would have been they, cool, honestly. And they I'll fucked agree me with out you. of that. Like, I wanted her to win that title and just pretend like it was the greatest thing ever. So what now, like... Who, uh, here we go. Who's 24 seven champion. I don't even remember right now. It changes uh, so frequently on, on people that don't really matter. Is it still Dana Brooke? Is it? Or did someone win it from her the other night? If I go to WWE's website and I look here, we've got Roman. Okay. Bianca, Dana Brooke's 24 seven champion, but I didn't fucking know that. Uh, oh, I knew that. I didn't know that. Well, because it changed like. Well, I feel like I, it always gets taken away from her, but she goes and gets it right back. Someone won it, and then she won it back, but yeah. Like it was that, her against Becky, so, remember? That's so irrelevant right now. I don't, yeah. Put it on somebody that matters. But as far as that match goes, the women's uh, Money in the Bank match, it's Becky Lynch, Raquel Rodriguez, Lacey Evans, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, Asuka, and Shotzi. That's a solid list. Mm-hmm. All those people, it's a good balance of new faces and established names who could... Who could win? I, you know, like really when I look at this, it's a coin flip on, on who should win. Now I have ideas on who I think will win, but it's a coin flip on who should win. I could make an argument for one, two, three, for every person on the list, essentially. Like I when I look at the you. men's match, I, there's a lot of people like, I'm not making an argument for Seamus. Mm-hmm. I'm not making an argument for Omos. 
I'm not. I'm really like I know this unpopular with our group of people we watch wrestling with, but I'm not making an argument for Riddle even. Seth Rollins, I can make an argument for. Drew McIntyre, I can make an argument for. Sami Zayn, I will make my argument for later. Okay. And then the two be announced is we don't know who that is. I don't know. <sighs> we okay. also found out on Monday Night Raw that Jake Paul is coming back to town. Jake Paul is making his return at SummerSlam. So Fuck we're yeah. so we're like here we go again WrestleMania all over again. Pat McAfee's <laughs> wrestling Jake Paul, and I'm still excited for it. Like I know a lot of people don't love when these guys, these like celebrities. Come back. Uh, Pat McAfee seems to get a pass and there's love for him. Pat fucking McAfee. Exactly, right? I mean, he loves this, he loves wrestling. He's there. He's putting his time and effort in. So, like, of course, people are excited for that. But Jake Paul comes back and immediately people start rolling their eyes. But, like, I loved Jake Paul. He did at his thing last time. And, and the fact that he's coming back. Now, we're just going to ignore the fact that Miz attacked him and write it off with some stupid logic of, like, it was a lesson. It's just best friends fighting. That's no, it. I think, I mean, look, if we play this correctly, they win again, which is what I'm, I'm banking on. They win again, and then this time, Jake Paul gets the best of The Miz, right? The, mm -hmm. the mentor gets the mentor, and it sets up for The Miz and Jake Paul at WrestleMania in Hollywood. True. Perfect. I mean, it's be... perfect setup to have them wrestle each other, because apparently Jake Paul's going to show up for the big offense, and uh, wait, is it? It's Logan. Why did I write Jake Paul? I don't know, but I'm just it's agreeing Logan. with you. Yeah, Jake. Jake. It's Logan Paul. It is Paul. Logan Paul. Logan I don't even Paul. think that I noticed it. Jake Paul's the it. one that's in all the shit with Tommy Fury right now. I know this. I just wrote down Jake Paul and started saying it's Logan Paul. Logan Paul's about. a wrestler. Logan yeah. Paul. Logan Paul's the one I like. The older brother. Yeah. Um, we got to see a, a Cody Rhodes interview. So they're keeping Cody Rhodes in kind of in our face here. Let him, he talked. Uh, I don't love behind the scenes interviews. Uh, the few things I took away from the interview, the scar, you know, it's not that injury looked so severe at hell in a cell. And then it's just funny how, and I've had back surgery, so it's not like I'm uneducated on what scars and like yeah. the incisions look like I, they did a laser and this, you know, the incision was this big, Yeah, but it's just funny. Like he doesn't look that fucking hurt. And I know that's a stupid, ignorant thing to say is he doesn't look hurt. Yeah. But I took like when he stood up, he put weight on that arm and that leg and he lifted himself up, I don't which know. is funny to me. Right. Cause there's still that inkling in me. I it think says, he's going to show up. He's that last person. So we're going to get to that. Like that's, we're going to get to that. What is what? Okay. Let's talk about it now. Fuck it. Let's okay, talk about it now. Yeah. What are the chances he's that last person? Like if uh, here's what I'm going to say, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Okay. But here's what I'm going to say. This is the thought process running through my brain. If they don't tell us on Friday, right? If we don't immediately start Friday night Smackdown and they go, here's the last qualifying match. And it's, Two bullshit people. I don't know. I don't even fucking know who's left. Ricochet or somebody like that, right? Mm -hmm. Who it probably will end up being. Somebody exciting. But if they don't, right? If we get through SmackDown and somehow it eludes us that they are not going to tell us who the last person is, I'm starting the rumors up. <laughs> I'm starting the rumors up again because I said this a long time ago, uh, right after Hell in the Cell. What if? Like, it's still what if? What if somehow they work Cody Rhodes into this match? <sighs> He's still the best person to win money in the bank. And I know like how far fetched it is. Oh, he really had surgery. I still haven't seen any fucking pictures from surgery, right? Yeah. What? He's got a bandaid on. All right. His wife said he had surgery. All right. I feel like all of them always post pictures like going in, wish me luck. I mean, Big E was in the freaking hospital. Like, right. I mean, usually you know? see some evidence that somebody, and this is like, I'm playing conspiracy therapist, uh, theorist here. I'm not, I do believe Cody. I'm Rhodes, on the, the same page with you here though. I, but no, I don't, 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 don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby, because I am playing conspiracy theory. I am of the utmost belief that Cody Rhodes had surgery. Let's get that straight. Like I do believe in my heart of hearts, he had sir. But what if? What if? What if he didn't? What if he didn't need it? What if he got in there and they're like, nah, man, you're good. Like, we can just rehab or what, this. May, okay, so let's say, like, he had surgery, but maybe it wasn't as bad <laughs> right? as Right? They just they had to thought. clean it up or something. Like, just like a little, Toot -toot, you know, you're good. <clears throat> what if the doctor said, oh, you could climb a ladder? Yeah. Like, you could climb a ladder. You Don't go out there and get fucked up. But, like, when everybody's looking the other direction, you could climb a ladder. Exactly. It's been done before. I'm just saying. The, Look, I'm not trying to fuel the fire. I believe Cody Rhodes had surgery. But what if? Just what if? 
Uh, my last takeaway from Monday Night Raw is I don't want John Cena back. I'm done. I'm over John Cena, and I like John Cena. And and it's actually it's a twofold problem for me. Number one, I forgot how long fucking winded John Cena is. He could talk about nothing for fucking thirty <laughs> minutes because he just like he it was literally this. It really feels like when you kind of dig into the psychology, all of these smoke shows were getting kind of feel like them trying to go. Don't remember what Vince McMahon did. John Cena's here. He's here. He's not going to wrestle. Hey, it worked. He came out. He basically came out and goes, I'm not back to wrestle. It's just an appreciation thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, they did set up that little thing in the back with Theory, which more than likely at uh, SummerSlam, I think we get John Cena Theory. I think so. Yeah. But there's no for sure because he came back and he's like, I don't know when I'm going to wrestle again. And as far as I'm concerned at this point in time, like John Cena is now Peacemaker to me. Yes. It's who I see when I look at him. And that's good. Like, he's transitioned to Hollywood. He made the transition. More power to him. I'm excited. I, I enjoy his movies. But I don't need him back in wrestling. I don't need John Cena. I, I saw that when he came out and talked for 30 minutes is what it felt like. And, and when that segment ended, I was like, the fuck did he just, like, what point did he make? Thank you. Other than, yeah, I mean, other than basically, like, saying, like, the WWE fans have held him accountable. All right, cool. I mean, is that what it took? You can't hold yourself accountable. He was noticeably smaller to me. Did he look smaller? So in the shoulders, he looked smaller to me. Uh, yes, I'll which, agree with you. Which I think goes in line with like the Hollywood thing. He can't just be like, I don't know if John Cena has done steroids. I don't know enough about steroids to know. But you can't be the guy who looks like he's on steroids because you get typecast. Mm -hmm. into definite roles and it definitely looks like john cena as weird as it sounds looked more human and less superhuman john cena always had kind of like a superhuman appearance because he was so big that's what i'm saying like it looks like he could lift up juicy (laughs) he just like john cena looks so person juicy so juicy uh but no like john cena always looked like he could pick up a truck and and like this last time seeing him on raw he looked human again, mm-hmm. which is cool. Like, it's all good. Like, maybe he's your friend who just works out a lot. Yeah. Maybe, maybe so. I don't know. Do you think we see him at SummerSlam? Um, I don't, I don't know. Honestly. So, th- theories. It could be later. I think we see him back at some point. Don't know if it's SummerSlam, though. But it's, I mean, so if you're what only bringing the next Cena. Thing? If you're only, it's WrestleMania. It's got to be WrestleMania. Because, right, you're not bringing Cena back for, like, Survivor Series. True. If Cena's coming back, it's in one of your two big events, like Nashville, all eyes on SummerSlam, or it's Hollywood WrestleMania, which also makes sense. But that's a long time to tease theory, unless he just holds on to that uh, United States belt. Yeah. For that long. All right. All right, Lauren. So over the weekend, we had uh, the Forbidden Door pay-per-view, which is the AEW pay-per-view yes. where uh, AEW took on New Japan Pro Wrestling and they combined a bunch of wrestlers that nobody's ever fucking heard of with wrestlers that some people have heard of and the IWC nutted themselves. And it was all real exciting. But one big thing that did happen was uh, Claudio Costa, Costa something, Cesaro as we know him, uh-huh. returned to uh, pro wrestling and and he wrestled the match and how, what, what I'm getting to here is that I had put out a video about three or four months ago where I went on record saying this is exactly what's going to happen Cesaro's going to show up in AEW the IWC is going to herald him as the greatest thing in pro wrestling and everybody's going to lose their shit now I, what, what I'm getting to is this video has resurfaced on my YouTube and it went from like 1200 views to now it's at like 10 or 11,000 views. People are trying to fucking come at me, even though this is, I'm sticking to what I said. Now I want to play the audio from this video here. Okay. And, uh, and then I want to kind of break it down. So earlier this week, we got news that, uh, Cesaro has reportedly left the WWE after failing to reach a new contract with WWE. Um, and I, you know, to be honest, I don't think he's really that big of a free agent. Now we know Tony Khan. He's f- he's a new shiny f- boy. He's probably going to bring him in, but I don't think it's that big of an acquisition because what's he going to do in AEW? He's still not going to have a great personality. What? Oh, he's going to be real technical and, and real good, and then they'll the IWC will herald him because this is what we always wanted was him to just be a mid card guy in AEW because that's what, okay. 
<laughs> so I'm getting a lot of shit. People are coming after me for that that video. But I stand 100. percent Everything I said is exactly what fucking happened. Let's let's be realistic about what just happened, okay? Tony Khan signed Cesaro, signed yeah. him to a contract, and he had this plan to bring him back, not at Forbidden Door, but at, at uh, either Blood and Guts or something else. I don't remember what the exact story was, but it wasn't here. This isn't where he came. The only reason that Cesaro, and I'm going to refer to him as Cesaro because I don't want to say his other name. I don't. It's too hard to fucking <laughs> He'll say. He'll always right? be Cesaro. The only reason he got thrust into this semi-main event picture is because Brian Danielson got hurt. That's it. That's what it was. Like, Brian Danielson got hurt, which triggered a series of events that caused him to be thrown into this main event situation that he's in. But I watched the Blood and Guts match that was tonight. Mm -hmm. And, And you should watch it. It was a hell of a match. It was great. And... Cesaro, Claudio, was everything I said he was. He's he's phenomenal in between the four ropes, the four corners. Yeah. He's amazing. He's extremely good. But, like, he just kind of screamed a few times. <laughs> he does not resonate with the, like, he's new. He's shiny. The crowd pops. They're excited. This is, this is another WWE guy who was on the indie circuit that they get to scream. WWE didn't know what to do with. Now he's in AEW and we're going to treat him right. But your guy, Tony Khan already said this wasn't the plan. He's here because Brian Danielson's not available. But when I look at, when I look at Claudio or I look at Cesaro, I still believe like he's missing the it factor. There's an it factor doesn't matter how good you can wrestle it really doesn't matter how good you can wrestle and i know the iwc that's the fuck that's poison to their ears to say it does not matter how good you can wrestle what matters to a casual audience and let's let's be honest the the biggest group of financially driven Audience members of pro wrestling are the casual audience. The moms and dads who buy the merchandise for their kids. That's where all the money comes pouring in. That's who the ad revenue companies, that's where they're trying, like, that's the target audience. I get that the IWC exists and, and they have this, the, the, you know, this smart mentality, but we have to be honest that the casual audience, that's what makes up the most of the audience. And what they care about is what you can do when you have, <coughs> excuse me. Is what you can do when you have a microphone. <clears throat> That's what they care about. That's what casual audiences care about. And then if you can get over with a microphone and then you can show them what a good wrestler you are, you've got the formula that 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 sets the wrestling world on fire. But let's be real with like guys like Brian Danielson, right? Brian Danielson has always been an extremely good wrestler. Great. One of the best, possibly the best, right? But it wasn't until he got paired up with Kane and put into a situation where they were in therapy and the whole yes, yes, yes thing started that he really exploded to another echelon. It wasn't his great wrestling. It was the weird pairing with Kane. It was the personality. It was the odd couple. That's what did it. And so... It, it, it's kind of, it's, it's this weird double-edged sword. If you're a great wrestler, but you can't talk, you're not going to get over with the casual audience, but you can be a bad wrestler and a good talker and still get over with the audience. And that's why it's professional wrestling. And it's an entertainment thing. You can try to sell me on AEW being the wrestling company, but they're not going to ever grow to the level of WWE until people start to embrace that entertainment is what sells tickets. You can't fill up Dallas Cowboys stadium on just wrestling. It doesn't work that way. I agree with you. Casual fans are where the money are, right? Mm -hmm. We took, we took your, uh, your brother and, and his wife to SmackDown this week, this past Friday. Yeah. And they hit the merch stand and they're like two or three weeks into this thing because they're the, they're like, and, and us as well. We're just, we've already got our merch, but this is the, this is what happens. These new fans, they're not super smart fans. They don't know everything. They don't, they don't even fully understand AEW yet. 
We've just yeah. introduced them to WWE. But those are those are the that's WWE's audience. That's who they want. The people who come in and the spectacle, the fireworks, the lights and things like that. And, and so I'm transitioning to we went to SmackDown this past week, this past Friday in mm-hmm. Austin, Texas. Phenomenal SmackDown. Oh, yeah. Nothing like once again, kind of like Raw. It didn't have any moments that blew you away, but it was another good paced wrestling show that felt like I enjoyed every minute of it. We said as we were leaving that like it went by so fast and that's how you know it's a good show. You know it's a good show if you don't feel like you're sitting around the whole time. Exactly. And I didn't. I felt like we got there. It it started and I never felt like sometimes Monday Night Raw is there are times where I get tired. That's why I love the two hours of SmackDown. Yeah. But but some of the things I noticed and I kept references to you, I probably annoyed you a little bit was like we have to recognize Butch. You love him. But I love him not for the reason of like his care. It is the amount of effort that somebody puts into their job that lets me know like how much they love what they do. And I watched Butch during that entire match, the entire Drew McIntyre and Sheamus tag team match. Uh-huh. He never breaks character. And what I mean by that is he never stays still. He is constantly trying to get to Drew McIntyre. Like, like a rabid dog. Yeah. And, and Ridge Holland is constantly having to pull him back. And it even got him thrown out of the match, and then he came running back in. But, I, like, there's, you have to appreciate that level because, let's be realistic, Butch is never going to ascend. W- what is Butch's ceiling? Intercontinental champion? Not as long as Gunther's champion, right? Yeah. He's just not big enough. So what is his, is he just always going to be a Seamus lackey? Is that what it is? But, God, he's so good at it. He is so good at it. Like, you have to recognize that. And that's what I was trying to, like, reiterate to you. was like, watch him. He doesn't stop. True. The only time I took my eyes off of Butch and watching that was to see, like, there's nothing like going to a, wrestle, a wrestling show. The, the, the different people, there's moms and dads. <laughs> there's children. There's grandmas. There's the IWC, which, you know what? I can... I can be cordial with the IWC where the, when we're at a wrestling show. Oh, yeah, because it's a different atmosphere. But then you turn to your left, and there's the guy who came by himself, who is completely shit-faced drunk, mm-hmm. and who has taken off and put his shirt back on at least 25 times. <laughs> Don't know what this guy was doing. He was built like a pencil with the biggest beer gut I had ever mm-hmm. seen in my life. This man was built like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Like, yes. just to... In every match, he either had his shirt on or off. Mm-hmm. Like, waving it around too, swinging though. Swinging around like Petey Pablo. Just, yes. This one's for, Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, that, that's the type of stuff you only get when you go to a wrestling show. But those are the things that make great memories. No, that's what makes it like, <laughs> but that is, like, it's well, like, so when we went different. to WrestleMania, I said there was the one kid, or he was a grown adult, um, that was dressed up like Riddle, but as soon as, um, Cody Rhodes came out. He just straight up threw himself on the floor and was like banging and making all these weird noises. You don't get that unless you go. And no. That's why I say like, and you don't get like. He was clearly drunk though too. But. If you're somebody and you don't like professional wrestling, I, I just challenge you. Go to a, first off, go to a SmackDown or a Raw and tell me at least that it's not one of the most spectacular shows you'll ever see. It's it's bigger and more elaborate than like Circus Soleil. Been to Circus Soleil. That was bullshit. Oh yeah. That was a bunch of people falling off a wall. And the Tarzan and like the thong. It was so weird. Yeah, I'm not getting into that. Yeah. And then I challenge you to go one step farther and go to a WrestleMania and tell me, name one thing outside of possibly the Super Bowl that is that big of a spectacle. And it's just like pro wrestling live know. is is amazing. One thing I did notice while we're there is you know, they talk about WWE pumping in crowd noise and I haven't gone back and watched SmackDown, but I, I like to go back and watch SmackDown because there was one thing that I did notice, right? Almost every wrestler who comes out garners some sort of reaction, right? Yes. Drew McIntyre comes out. People lose their shit. Sheamus comes out. Everybody boos. Raquel Rodriguez came out because we're in Texas. People lose their shit. Lacey Evans comes out. It's quiet. Nobody fucking made any noise. I agree. Like it was, there is this, air this aura of confusion surrounding her character are we supposed to cheer we're supposed to like her i think we're supposed i think they want us to like her 
but then nobody really likes her. And she came out and she was just kind of stealing like Raquel Rodriguez's thunder. Yeah. Trying to like get a look. Like that match was obviously designed. It was a two on one between Raquel Rodriguez and Lacey Evans versus Sonya Deville. So they took Sonya because they know Sonya, she gets good heat. Yeah. Good bad guy. Like Sonya Deville. Thinks she needs a bigger role in in what's going on in the women's division. And, And Raquel Rodriguez is obviously skyrocketing to the top right now. Mm-hmm. Everybody likes her. Then you have Lacey Evans who absolutely no reaction. And so this match was obviously put in here to try to get Lacey Evans to take just a little bit of that, that shine off of Raquel Rodriguez. And it just felt like it fell so flat. Well, even when like they came out and um, you know, Raquel Rodriguez, her whole thing is. Yes. Thing, and then right? Lacey Evans Lacey is doing Evans the same thing. Like, and it's yeah. like, stop. And it was like cringy. It was cringy. It was like, was like mm. it was like, you have no identity. So you're just going to try and ride on this girl's coattail. And I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. I liked her better as like the all American, whatever girl. Yeah, I did Whatever too. Like was. the kind of like pin up old uh, old yeah. timey. Yeah, I like. I definitely thought that was a better they character. They could have this just weird built new that like up empowered character with the fucking thong bodysuit and camo pants. I don't like. It's so confusing to me. I agree. I agree. 100%. And my last takeaway from going to the live was uh, the dark match. And I don't. You know. I don't. Maybe this is an unpopular opinion. The dark matches and live events, those are always the most fun to me because once the cameras are turned off, the wrestlers have a lot more freedom to interact and do things. But I don't understand. Why not just give these wrestlers that ability when the cameras are on? Um, There's a lot more like you, like you, they feel more human. Natalia, when she's on TV, I, she's kind of boring and blah. Well, cause I feel like for her, there's almost like this so when you watch like Total Divas, right, they always kind of made fun of her and called her like the old lady and stuff like that. Because that's kind of like her personality is to be, I think, in my opinion, more like introverted. And so she almost comes off kind of fake sometimes on TV to me. Um, and in the dark match, she seemed to just be a little bit more relaxed well, and kind of real. she worked the crowd so well. I agree. She worked the crowd, the getting out of the ring the the yelling into the crowd, the pointing, and the kind of like I don't ever see her do that smug, on TV. She doesn't. It, it's almost like she goes into like a programmed robot when she's on television, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you see her in this dark match, and her and Ronda Rousey, which I gotta tell you, gives me really high expectations for Money in the Bank in their mm-hmm. match. I'm excited for that. Me too. But but yeah, I, the dark match to me, like that's that's the fun of wrestling, and if someone doesn't get to experience that part. And see somebody like Natalia break out of that shell and, and and get to be, get to do crowd work. It just showed like, oh, that's Natalia. Like Natalia understands this business more than most people. They just a lot of times probably don't let her do the things she knows how to do best. Yeah. One thing I'm going to mention that I really miss at live events is commentary. I enjoy the commentary, especially when it's from Pat McAfee. I agree. My favorite. I agree. I mean, it is, you almost see him talking and you see his animation. You're like, I wonder what he's saying. Yeah. Sure. Uh, transitioning here to, uh, we are starting a, we where we started. We had a draft for a WWE fantasy league. So we found if anybody is interested, there is a website called drop the belt. And for a small fee, you can create a, WWE, AW, NXT, fantasy, wrestling, fo- it's like fantasy football, but for wrestling. And so we started a league and we started a league. It's me, you, your brother, his wife, my dad, and our two daughters. Mm-hmm. And we had a draft. And I just want to kind of quickly go over. Uh, so the draft video will probably be up tomorrow. You can check it out. Don't judge it based on its quality. It was kind of a test run for everybody setting up equipment so they're definitely it will you know the the quality will improve i'm a i'm a stickler for quality yes. as you can see yes, in what i are. do um but but i want to just kind of go over these teams real quick and just kind of you know talk about what we got tex mcgomage which is, uh, which is your brother uh-huh was able to draft uh seth rollins solid choice riddle ray mysterio lacey evans i gotta tell you though this cody Rhodes choice he made he's gonna regret that is he though? That's true. <laughs> That's when true. When he comes back at Money in the Bank. So you know, we'll ask start. me again. Ask me that question again on Monday, next Monday. Yeah. And I'll tell you if he's going to regret that. 
Mm-hmm. As of right now, though, I still feel like he's going to regret that. I don't feel like I almost chose Cody. It was on my list. Uh, our daughter Skylar got Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Ivar, Madcap Moss, and Roman Reigns. Now, we were informed this morning that she is trading Roman Reigns for Shotzi in the most little girl move ever. I know. So that's happening. Our other daughter, Kylie, got AJ Styles, Bianca Belair, Ricochet, Shotzi, and Theory, which will now be AJ, Bianca, Ricochet, Roman, and Theory. That scares me. There's a lot of big names there. Bianca, she's got all of the, like, if you if you were to tell me, like, who are the main, the main, like, the people who carry the company, you'd go, it's like, oh, it's like Bianca, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's Roman. It's Theory. Because Theory's kind of the new kid. Oh, yes. Man. That list scares me. Then uh, Sarah, which is Craig's, uh, Tex McGomas' wife, got Butch, Drew McIntyre, Happy Corbin, Kevin Owens, Shanky. That, to me, is a hell of a team, but I have zero fear of what that team's going to do. I agree. I mean, Butch is Butch. Is Butch. I love Butch to death, and I love Shanky to death. I just don't know how many matches they're winning. Exactly. Uh, you got Edge, Ezekiel, Jimmy Uso, Rhea Ripley, Ronda Rousey. Could be solid, but you've got two people that are injured. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Okay. So before we started this, I uh-huh. said, I don't want to do what happened to me in fantasy you football. Panic. You panic. Where uh, it just chose for me because I ran out of time. You panicked. Right. A hundred percent I panicked. And then I ended up with Rhea Ripley, and I didn't really want Rhea Ripley. So you we'll, got we'll Rhea see Ripley, what who hopefully is back. And Edge, who hopefully is back, but if they don't come back, the problem is in a game like this where the scoring is is really based on how much they're on TV. I don't think I understand the rules like before we started. So, yeah, you, you know. know, the rules were there to read. Uh, my <laughs> team, my team is Bobby Lashley, Jay Uso, Montez Ford, Raquel Rodriguez, and The Miz. I think it's a solid five. That is That's a good. winning combination. Bobby Lashley is a winner. Jay Uso is a winner. Montez Ford is a winner. Raquel Rodriguez is on her way to the top. And The Miz, especially going into SummerSlam with uh, Logan Paul, is is definitely going to start winning some matches. And then last but not least was my dad. He got Angelo Dawkins, Damian Priest, Gunther, Omos, and Sheamus. Solid, solid team. Gunther, yeah. Gunther, <laughs> I think the sky's the limit for Gunther. I don't know about the Damian Priest choice. Yeah. Three weeks ago, I probably would have said that was solid. Yes, sir. Omos, Seamus. Yeah. So we'll be keeping we'll be keeping up to date with this on a weekly basis. Everybody will get in and talk. You'll see the videos where we talk about this. Uh, and then, like, the season ends at SummerSlam. And we'll be starting a new season. And we'll probably do something where we allow a couple people who listen to the show to join the league and, and play the next season with us. This this first month season, because we're coming in on the end of it, it's really a trial run to see how we can make it work. Yes, sir. All right, so let's get to All what right. we what we came here to fucking do, and that is our money in the bank predictions for uh, Nashville's money in the bank. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. I have a chance to get the belt back. Confirmed. Yeah. You, let me get my belt yep. out here. Put the belt on the... The champ right now, still the champ, still currently a champ. So it sounded like to me, based on something that you were hinting on earlier, I was afraid that we may go down this board and have identical choices, I don't which I guess are. wouldn't make me afraid because by default, I would keep my title. How, how do you want to play this? Do you want to do the ladder matches last? Or yeah. do you, so you want to we'll do ladder matches? Okay, I have them listed the other okay. way, but let's, let's work no. backwards. So let's go theory versus Bobby Lashley. Who do you got? Theory. Me too. Theory. So it's a wash there. Yeah. The Usos versus the Street Profits. Who do you have there? Usos, duh. Same. So so this is what I was afraid of is that while I think this is going to be a fun card to watch, mm-hmm. outside of the ladder matches, I think it's it's a highly predictable card. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Ronda versus Natalia. Ronda. Bianca versus Carmella. Bianca. So. I mean, like. Those four matches are a wash for us because I definitely have that same exact card lined out. So where where the meat and potatoes, all that's really going to matter is who we have. And that's why I'm not even going to discuss those, right? Yeah. It's who we have in these ladder matches that's going to make the difference. Now, let's start with women's. And 
I don't. So this this is tough for me. The women's is the hardest match for me to call because I told you earlier, I can make an argument for everyone. Mm-hmm. I can make an argument for why Becky Lynch should win the Money in the Bank and continue this reign of she's the best woman to ever do this, right? Mm-hmm. And I can make an argument for Lacey Evans, even though I'm confused as fuck. Like, if you want to kind of straighten her character out, give her the Money in the Bank and let us believe that she's a credible threat. True. Alexa Bliss is Alexa Bliss. Fucking people love her. Kids love her. I Fans love her. love her. Everybody loves her. So you can't go wrong there, especially if you're putting her on the back burner for something bigger later on. Liv Morgan, some people have her as a favorite. She's, to me, the least likely to win this. Raquel Rodriguez, Asuka, and Shotzi. Who do you have? I have Liv Morgan. So, oh, so okay. So I just Which fucking. Is, you just shit just on my parade. Shit all over you your said, pig. She's the least likely. And I'm like, well, you know, bro, we'll see. <sighs> we did this a few months ago. Okay. We we flirted with the idea of Liv Morgan being champion. Remember, there was the whole fucking. Uh, should it be Bianca? Should it be Liv? And Liv got this little. Like, where she flirted with, uh, with going after Becky Lynch in the title. And when she got the opportunity, we went, oh, Liv can't talk on a microphone. Mm -hmm. She's not ready. She hasn't done anything to get ready. She's not ready. I feel like they're going to give her that opportunity, though. I feel like like they always seem to work her into something all the time. And so. So, so I, yes, but that's what scares, doesn't scare me, but that's what should scare you is Liv Morgan is a great piece of the puzzle that can win or lose, and they just work her into a match, right? She doesn't need to be the champion. It's not that big of a deal. Everybody just kind of gets excited when Liv comes out. She does her thing, and she goes back to the back. Mm-hmm. That's I, my pick. So I... Who'd you pick? So there were two. So I have my... We can my, only have one, though, okay? Well, hold on. Can I can I discuss my thought process? Well, no, this is serious. We're going for the belt here. So who I want <laughs> to win is Shotzi. I do too, but that's who I want to win this match. And that's who I will be cheering for in my heart of hearts. But who I think is going to win is Raquel Rodriguez. Ooh, I could see that. She's skyrocketing. Like they're so behind her and they should be like, she's got all the intangibles size and and she's pretty, which I know that only counts a little bit, but still. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I just call it the look, right? Cause you don't have to be pretty. You have to have the look. I still say someone like Shayna Baszler has the look. She's scary. Yeah. So she's believable. So it's not about necessarily attractiveness as much as it is you portraying the character that you're trying to portray. True. Raquel Rodriguez has the look. But I, I like if you if you look at who could benefit the most, it's her. It because typically it's not going to get cashed in immediately, especially with the champions we have. Ronda's not losing the title right now, and Bianca's not going to lose. If Bianca loses the title, it's Rhea Ripley. That's what it is. It's not going to be one of these. So more than likely, it's a SmackDown person to me. It's not a Raw person. Raquel Rodriguez makes sense. And I think that Ronda's kind of shown what it looks like to take a little bit of a liking to Raquel Rodriguez. So I feel like if Ronda was going to pass the torch, like she wouldn't have a problem doing it there. That's just my opinion. That's my thought process. Okay. I'm going Raquel Rodriguez. All right. So there's our first... So basically we have, mm-hmm. if Liv wins, that's going to give you the edge. Because I think in the men's we're going to agree. No, we're not. No, I remember we're not. this. Okay. We're not. So men's. So men's. Let's, let's go, go. Men's. So men's. I said mine earlier. You're like, Riddle's never going to win. Well, same thing. I believe that Riddle is going to take it. I just don't know how you, I like, it's, it's such a convoluted puzzle for me to make that work. Right? We just got a hellacious match between Riddle and Roman Reigns that I felt like was there to go. Not yet. Not yet. Like soon Riddle will be ready for this, but not yet. And I just don't think that you take the money in the bank briefcase and you, you put it back on Riddle and go, well, at any time he could strike on Roman Reigns. I don't like that story. I just don't think I don't think that's how you get to there, especially with all the other pieces kind of interworking. I don't like it. To me, what makes the most sense is and still if if Cody Rhodes doesn't somehow fucking show up and get the briefcase, the next best situation is to give the briefcase 
to the man that he has the problem with, which is Seth Rollins, right? Because almost inevitably you can take the story you were going to tell and just flip it around, right? We yeah. were going to have this idea of Cody Rhodes having the uh, briefcase, winning it, and then probably fighting uh, Seth Rollins later on for the title somehow. But now we just do it the opposite way. If, if anybody can beat Roman Reigns, and if there's anybody who can beat Roman Reigns and, and not tarnish the legacy of Roman Reigns, it's Seth Rollins. Because they have history. And he's a credible threat. He's sure. always been kind of billed as the one thorn in Roman Reigns' side. And why not continue that? that? You got a good point, but if, I'm still If Roman's going bye-bye, it's what we believe, right? We believe Roman's slowing down, going bye-bye. Seth Rollins is the guy to take all of that heat from Roman Reigns and go, ha, 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 ha. I beat the head of the table. I beat the big dog. Now I'm the universal champion. Mm-hmm. Now I have both belts. I don't think that same, you don't get that same effect from Riddle. Riddle will be a world champion, 100%. It's just not now. Drew McIntyre, I, I almost, you can make the argument, but I think you he doesn't need money in the bank to challenge Roman Reigns. He can just have his moment with Roman Reigns. But uh, the one person in this match, Sami Zayn, I think that would be the most interesting, to I, be honest with you. It would be funny. And it, I know it's it's probably not big enough of a side story, but him winning and then like being an honorary member of the, uh, the bloodline, but having the briefcase and at all times, like there being this weird, credible threat of if Roman slips up, could he cash in? They made it a point to bring it up that like he wouldn't do it against Roman, but that's what makes it so fucking good because Sami Zayn could be like the ultimate opportunist. Right. And like, ah, man, if I was right, like if I'm right in WWE, that's where I'm going. I'm having Sami Zayn win it. I'm having Roman versus Brock that night. I'm having just a fucking battle of carnage yeah. to end the night. They're they're so beat. There's blood. There, there's guts on the fucking ring. And here comes Sami tiptoeing out. He doesn't know what to do. And, and he hands over the belt. I mean, hands over the briefcase, wins the titles. And now you have the bloodline going after Sami Zayn for the next couple months and, and ultimately ending with Roman Reigns just destroying him and getting the belt back. True. That would be interesting. It's not going to happen, though, because they're not. The streak is the problem. They don't want to break this streak that Roman's on. Yeah. You got anything else? No, I think that's it. I think we got it all out this week. Uh, good show. Good show. Felt good. Mm-hmm. Felt like my predictions are going to win. Feels we'll like see. the title's coming home. Stay or staying home. We'll see. Staying with me, you know. This has been another episode of the Casual Wrestling Community Show. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday night, Thursday morning for a new episode. Uh, as always, I am the Notorious Nerdy D. That is Level Up Lauren. And ring the final bell. Ding, ding, ding.